Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Red Hat Summit 2015. Brought to you by Red Hat. Hi everyone, I'm Sam Kahane with Stu Miniman. You're watching The Cube. We're here at the Heinz Convention Center at Red Hat Summit. Uh, we're going to wrap it up for you. This is the end of the spring tour, and it has been a fantastic conference so far. Great energy in this place. Uh, they're Red Hat tattoos. They're giving out clam chowder in Boston, our favorite city. Giving away GoPros. We had some great interviews. Jim Whitehurst came on. Stu, how many years have you been here? So it's my second year at the show. Sam, did you win the GoPro? I entered four raffles. They're not all over yet, <laughs> but uh, so far, no GoPro. All right. Well, it, it is my second year at the show, and I really like this show. First of all, uh, you know, we got great guests on theCUBE. Mm -hmm. So first of all, the executive team, very open, as you would expect with Red Hat. Um, really good discussion. Uh, and, you know, as, as Jim Whitehurst said in his book and on the Cube, they're really helping to catalyze communities. So um, it's not all about pushing a product. It, it's about helping with the open source vision and therefore, the, you know, the various things that they're helping to do, broad partnerships, pulling in their customers. Had a couple of really good, you know, partner and customer sessions here as to where they, they, they're doing, you know, really interesting things, uh, whether it just be, you know, on, on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, going up to the virtualization, OpenStack, OpenShift, all the things they're doing in container. I mean, you know, we, we started the week at DockerCon and come back and, you know, Red Hat's like, oh yeah, you know, behind Docker, who's the number two contributor uh, in, in the open source space, it's Red Hat. Kubernetes from Google, number two is Red Hat. So, you know, nobody ever would doubt, uh, you know, the open source credibility, nor do we doubt at this point that open source is a hugely important piece of IT and open source is ubiquitous and people aren't just saying, oh, it's okay if I do open source, they are asking for open source and therefore Red Hat has a seat at the table uh, for lots of discussions. Great, Stu, I couldn't agree with you more. And you know, like you said, we had so many great guests on if you were going to pick out a couple must-watch, you know, interviews for our guests or for yourself to rewatch, who would you say? Yeah, so, you know, it, it, it's a little easy for me sometimes because I say I want to start with the user case studies because that's the best way to understand how this technology works and how it can transform our business. So, Dietmar uh, from... Uh, Amadeus uh, was a great segment yesterday. Um, really, the, the travel industry is one that is you know, mission critical, uh, that has to help a lot of environments, gone through a ton of changes you know, over the last couple of decades. And uh, they are you know, an early, you know, really uh, lighthouse account for OpenShift. Uh, you know, lots of OpenShift customers out there, but you know, the one that they have front and center, and you can understand why. They are really passionate about what they're doing at OpenShift, and I think he did a really good job of articulating what it did for it. Um, from the executive standpoint, both Paul Cormier uh, and Jim Whitehurst, I mean, phenomenal guests, so much experience, so much knowledge. Paul has been there since the early days of Red Hat, and Jim, it was like, it reminded me of one of my MBA classes. You kind of go through, um, I, I do recommend reading his book, uh, because you know, there are things that we learned as to you know how the hierarchy is changing and how we can get, all get involved uh, in, in a lot of topics. Uh, the last segment we just had with Sarah Novotny, uh, you know, personally one, one of my favorites just because as somebody I've known for a bunch of years, uh, but to get down and really share some of the conversations that like I like having in the hallways in the back corners of these events and online uh, to bring that to our audience. So, so many good uh, interviews here. It's tough to pick a few because lots of really smart people and lots of good content uh, throughout the two days of coverage. Absolutely, and I think we had our youngest guest ever come on. Jim, uh, Jim's son came on for a little bit. We took some group pictures, so that was always fun as well. Yeah, I, you know, it, it really highlights. You know, uh, Jim, Jim Whitehurst, CEO, had had his son here, um, and it's about culture. You know, Red Hat. One of their differentiations out there is the culture of the company. Uh, they say that you know, culture will conquer all. Um, and you know, how does that drive you know, you know, natively innovation? How does that keep them from being disrupted? Um, because we know that. The, the pace of change, uh, you know, is happening so fast. Uh, there's a great line from Doug Baylog in his keynote uh, this morning. Said, you know, if uh, you're afraid of change, you know, you probably don't want to be in the IT industry because, uh, as, as we all know, the only thing that's constant in IT is the the rapid pace of change. Absolutely. And speaking of change, Stu, so you've been coming to this event for a long time. How has the actual event changed? What was the topic like last year? How has it shifted? 
what do you expect in the future? So, uh, Sam, actually, this is one one event that uh, you know it's it's only been two years for me, but I've tracked Red Hat now. You know, I I've, I was a partner with Red Hat, you know, 15 years ago, um, and. In some ways, a lot of things change, but in a lot of ways, they don't may change all that fast. Jim Whitehurst actually said, um, and the reason that is is because they're not the ones just ne necessarily coming up with an idea. They're looking for what the users and the communities get things started, and then they're getting heavily involved. Um, so, you know, Red Hat comes and says, oh, yeah, this container thing, it's not like this caught them by surprise. LXC has been around for, I think, almost a decade now. Um, they got involved very early. Uh, they were there. Uh, it was great to hear, you know, Red Hat and Microsoft got together to help work we get Docker and CoreOS to, uh, to get OCP, the Open Compute Project, uh, not, I'm sorry, not, not Open Compute, Open Container Project, too many OCPs, uh, <laughs> you know, going. Uh, so uh, in, in many ways, you know, there are some shows that are always like, oh, you know, we got 5,000 more people and we're growing this much. From a revenue standpoint, Red Hat is growing. Dave Vellante did a real good job breaking down, uh, you know, if the company, their, their core product line's growing, I think it's about 12 to 14% year over year. That's phenomenal growth. If I look at, you know, the server industry, the storage industry, the networking industry, you know, low single digits is a good growth company, and Red Hat is, is, is still growing at a, at a tight rate. At, at, a, at a good pace. Their newer areas are growing more 50, 40 to 50 percent. Obviously opportunities in cloud, uh, opportunities in uh, you know, modern applications in, in the developers uh, world. Uh, and you know, Red Hat being a public company is really the poster child uh, for so much of you know, this open source adoption. Um, I'm real interested over the next couple of years. I don't necessarily expect you know more billion dollar open source companies. I do expect lots of companies that will be built on open source, leveraging open source, put the products in, and that leaves Red Hat with lots of opportunity to, to, to you know get into a lot of environments. Right, and Jim Whitehurst was saying his big goal right now, like you said, is just gain that market share. You know, take away from the competition and keep growing. So, Stu, it's been a crazy spring tour. You know, finally we'll have a little break, a little time to rest. Uh, would you, could you summarize what, what we've done so far this year and then tell us what you're excited for in the future? All What's right, so next? over the next hour we're going to go through <laughs> all of the various shows we did. Boy, Sam, we, we've been at so many shows. We have. Um, I, I tell this spring, uh, really appreciate everybody that's been watching this program. Uh, you know, I, I can't even think of where this show, uh, you know, started. I had a checklist on my whiteboard just for a segment uh, of the, like, hyperconvergent stuff that I cover in that space, not to mention it's cloud, big data, and infrastructure, Wikibon research, everything going on in the cube, so many shows. Um, you know, you know I, I need some time to just reflect on it because, uh, you know, we, I think it's been like 19 or 20 live events we've done. We've been averaging two events a week, actually I had three this week. Uh, so, you know, real shout out to the whole team as to, you know, so many moving pieces. You know, we love going out to these events, extracting the signal from the noise, uh, and bringing all of this takes a lot of work behind the scenes. Uh, so, you know, maybe Sam, uh, you know, the wrap up at this point, you know, thanks Sam for you. You know, you're, you're new to the team. You know, thanks, Stu. Any, any quick, uh, you know, takes, you know, you joined us at the beginning of this spring tour, you know, f from the, you know, new, new view, what, what, what's your take so far? It's, it's exciting, you know, there's so much energy at these events and you, you come in, you get the smartest people in the room, the executives, interview them and it's a community, you know, it's, that's what I realized, it's such a small IT community and everyone's so connected. It's nice to, you know, have CUBE alumni as well who keep coming on and develop those relationships. Uh, it, it's been great, and we have a great team that's fun to work with. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, and it is, you know, we are very much committed to the community here. If you go to crowdchat.net slash rhsummit, you see all the chats that we have here. When we're going to the events, if there's people that we should have on, hit us up and let us know. The, the Cube has a Twitter account. I'm Stu, Di Vellante, Furrier, the whole team. Uh, we're on Twitter. We're really easy to get in touch with. Uh, there were people that I got on the program at DockerCon, at this show, uh, many of the other shows, OpenStack, um, where you know people came and they said, oh, hey, wait, there's a practitioner that should get on. Here's a thought leader you should get on. Um, and you know we really enjoy the platform that we have here. Um, but it, it's all about right the content and the audience that we can help. Love to go out to new events. If there's an event that we should be at that's not yet on, SiliconAngle.tv, you know, hit us up. We'd love to work to figure out how it makes sense to go. So, uh, you know, for Dave Vellante, who is here co-hosting, I'm Stu Miniman. Want to thank, you know, Luke, Sam, Andy, Brendan back at the ranch, uh, Bert and John been hitting up on the uh, the crowd chat. The rest of the team that have been uh, making everything happen, you know, throughout the spring tour in here. And uh, Sam, bring us on home. 
Thank you. And I also want to give a shout out to Andy. Uh, it's his birthday today. Happy 29th, Andy. <laughs> Luke, thanks for everything you're doing. Brendan and Matt Cowling. Uh, we couldn't do this without you. And a big shout out to Red Hat. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and great content here in the Cube. Yeah, look forward to San Francisco next year. They're going to be Absolutely. back. Absolutely, uh, it's a bi-coastal show. They do Boston one year, San Francisco the next year. So it's the end of June, right before July Fourth next year. Going to be back in Moscone, uh, and uh, we'd love to be there. Can't wait. So Cube Nation, thank you for watching. We'll see you soon. <laughs>